officer. There is no record of any Federation vessel encountering anything remotely like this. The casting process for Star Trek The Next Generation in 1987 was a meticulous journey to find the right actors who could embody the spirit of the new Star Trek series. For the role of Captain John Luke Picker, several well-known actors were considered, including Patrick Stewart. Initially, the producers were hesitant due to his Shakespearean background, but Stewart's audition was so compelling that they created the character of Picker specifically for him. The part of Commander William Riker was offered to Jonathan Frakes after he impressed the producers with his portrayal of a confident and experienced officer. Frakes' chemistry with Stewart was evident from their first reading together. Deanna Troy, the ship's counselor, was played by Marina Sirtis. She initially auditioned for another role, but was called back for Troy. Sirtis' chemistry with Frakes and Stewart during auditions solidified her casting. Brent Spiner was chosen for the role of the android, Data, after a single audition. His ability to balance the character's robotic nature with human emotions won over the producers. For the role of Lieutenant Geordi Lyforge, LeVar Burton was a natural fit, bringing his experience from the original Star Trek series. His audition confirmed the producer's belief that he was the right choice. Gates McFadden, as Dr. Beverly Crusher, and Michael Dorn, as Lieutenant Worf, completed the main cast. McFadden's medical experience and Dorn's portrayal of a Klingon with depth and nuance made them ideal for their roles. The casting of TNG was a careful balance of talent, chemistry, and the ability to bring new dimensions to the Star Trek universe. The result was a diverse and captivating ensemble that would become beloved by fans worldwide. It's psychologically valid. Commander. The directors of Star Trek The Next Generation, including Gene Roddenberry, brought their unique visions to the series, influencing its style and tone. They aimed to create a thought-provoking, optimistic vision of the future, focusing on exploration, diplomacy, and diversity. Collaborating closely with the cast and crew, these directors drew inspiration from various sources, including classic literature, mythology, and historical events. They used innovative visual effects, production design, and storytelling techniques to create a captivating and immersive world. Directors like Winrich Colby and Cliff Bull emphasize character development and emotional depth, working closely with actors to ensure authentic performances. They encourage improvisation and exploration of character motivations, fostering a creative and supportive environment on set. The directors also collaborated with the show's writers to develop compelling narratives that resonated with audiences. They focused on creating a balance between action, drama, and humor, ensuring that each episode offered a unique and engaging experience. In addition, the director's approach to visual storytelling was instrumental in bringing the series to life. They employed a variety of camera angles, lighting, and editing techniques to create a dynamic and visually striking show. This, combined with their commitment to character-driven storytelling, helped to establish Star Trek The Next Generation as a groundbreaking and enduring television series. We hope you find the room come. Star Trek The Next Generation, which first aired in 1987, is a classic television series that many people love. You might think you know everything there is to know about this show, but there are some fascinating facts and anecdotes that you might find surprising. For example, did you know that actor Will Wheaton, who played Wesley Crusher, didn't get along with the show's producers? Or that the character of Deanna Troy, played by Marina Sirtis, was almost written out of the series before it even began? There are also many memorable moments from the next generation that have stuck with fans for years. One of my personal favorites is the episode The Inner Light, where Captain Picard lives an entire lifetime on a dying alien planet. It's a powerful and emotional episode that shows the depth and range of the series. Of course, there are also plenty of funny, shocking, and sad moments throughout the series. You'll have to watch this video to find out more. Do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to Star Trek The Next Generation? We'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Whether it's your favorite episode, a memorable moment with friends or family, or something else entirely, we want to hear your stories. I want you to wake the senior staff. The production of Star Trek The Next Generation in 1987 was a significant endeavor in television history. The sets, designed by Herman Zimmerman, were meticulously crafted to resemble a 24th century starship. The main set, the USS Enterprise-D, was built on Paramount Stage 9, spanning 12,000 square feet. 
Zimmerman's team created innovative designs, such as the ship's bridge, engine room, and 10 forward lounge, blending futuristic concepts with functionality. The sets were built using a combination of traditional techniques and cutting-edge technology, including computer-controlled lighting systems. Locations for TNG were primarily limited to the studio sets, but the series occasionally featured exterior shots of ships and landscapes. These were often created using models, miniatures, and matte paintings, which allowed for the creation of convincing space scenes on a television budget. The logistical challenges of filming TNG were numerous. The show's elaborate sets, complex special effects, and large cast required careful planning and coordination. To manage these challenges, the production team employed innovative techniques, such as dividing the sets into zones to facilitate efficient lighting and camera setup. TNG also made use of early digital technology, including the Quantel Harry digital paint system, which allowed for the creation of sophisticated visual effects. The show's use of digital technology was groundbreaking for its time and paved the way for future television productions. In summary, the production of Star Trek, the next generation combined traditional set design and location shooting with innovative techniques and technology to create a captivating and enduring science fiction series. It's just not the real you. With regard to romantic... Re Star Trek The Next Generation, which first aired in 1987, is a pioneering series that combines interesting, thought-provoking, and entertaining stories with great values. The show, created by Gene Roddenberry, is often referred to as a wagon train to the stars, and has a long history of both excellent and less successful episodes. The series follows the crew of the Starship Enterprise as they explore the galaxy, encountering new civilizations, and facing various challenges. The casting of the program is one of its strongest points, with Patrick Stewart and Brent Spiner delivering standout performances. The writing in the series is intelligent and engaging, and the show often explores complex themes and ideas. While some story arcs may not be as compelling as others, there are certain episodes that stand out as particularly noteworthy. For example, episodes involving the character Q and the Borg are often cited as being among the best in the series. Q, played by John Delancey, is a powerful and mischievous being who serves as a foil for the crew of the Enterprise, challenging their beliefs and forcing them to confront their own humanity. The Borg, on the other hand, are a collective of cybernetically enhanced beings who assimilate other civilizations into their collective. These episodes often explore the themes of individuality, free will, and the dangers of unchecked technological advancement. Despite its occasional inconsistencies, Star Trek The Next Generation is a groundbreaking series that has had a lasting impact on the science fiction genre. Its intelligent writing, strong casting, and thought-provoking stories have made it a favorite among fans for generations. Even in today's world of terrorism and threats of war, the philosophies and values presented in the series remain relevant and provide a hopeful vision of the future. Whether you're a longtime fan or new to the world of Star Trek, this series is definitely worth checking out. The creation of the Star Trek The Next Generation score and soundtrack was a meticulous process involving composers and musicians who aimed to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the series. The music, composed by Ron Jones, Jerry Goldsmith, and others, played a significant role in shaping the atmosphere of TNG. Ron Jones, who composed for four seasons, aimed to create a unique sound for each character and situation. He used leitmotifs, recurring musical themes associated with specific characters or concepts, to enhance the storytelling. For instance, the Enterprise theme represented exploration and hope, while the Q theme conveyed mystery and otherworldliness. Jerry Goldsmith, who composed the main title theme and several episodes, brought a sense of grandeur and drama to TNG. His themes, like the Picard and Klingon motifs, added depth and emotion to the characters and their journeys. Goldsmith's music, with its blend of orchestral and synthesized elements, mirrored the series' fusion of traditional and futuristic elements. Dennis McCarthy, another prominent composer, contributed to TNG's distinctive sound. He often used unconventional instrumentation, such as a synthesized duduk for the Borg theme, to create a striking, memorable impression. The musicians, working closely with the composers, played a crucial part in bringing the music to life. The London Symphony Orchestra, for example, performed many of the series' most memorable pieces, lending a rich, full-bodied sound to the score. 
In crafting the TNG soundtrack, these composers and musicians sought to enhance the series' narrative and emotional tone. Their work, characterized by inventive orchestrations, memorable themes, and a keen sense of storytelling, has left an indelible mark on the world of science fiction television. A Federation starship rescuing a Klingon outpost. Might have a... Michael Dorn, known for his role in Star Trek The Next Generation, has also shared screen time with Saul Rubinek in certain episodes of The Outer Limits. On the other hand, Whoopi Goldberg, a Star Trek The Next Generation co-star, is a notable figure in Hollywood, being one of the 12 black actresses to receive a Best Actress Oscar nomination. Patrick Stewart, renowned for his portrayal of Captain John Luke Picker in Star Trek The Next Generation, has an enduring presence in the television industry, having played the same character in five different series, including Star Trek Picker, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Family Guy, and Robot Chicken. Lieutenant, you wouldn't complain even if you had cause. One of the most iconic scenes in Star Trek, The Next Generation is in the episode The Best of Both Worlds, where Captain Picker gets assimilated by the Borg, becoming Locutus. The direction, performance, and cinematography of this scene are exceptional. The director, Cliff Bull, uses low-key lighting and close-up shots to create a sense of tension and foreboding. The performance of both Patrick Stewart, who plays Picar, and the Borg is remarkable. Stewart's transformation from a confident an in-control captain to a helpless victim is truly chilling. The Borg's cold, mechanical delivery is in stark contrast to Picard's human emotions, making the scene even more impactful. The makeup and costume departments also did an excellent job. The Borg's mechanical suit and Picard's Borg-like appearance are meticulously designed and constructed, adding to the scene's overall impact. This scene had a significant impact on the audience, as it was a cliffhanger ending for the third season. It left viewers eagerly anticipating the next season to find out what would happen to Picard and the crew of the Enterprise. In an interview, Patrick Stewart commented on this scene, saying, It was a very powerful and emotional experience for me as an actor. I felt a real sense of loss and helplessness, and I think that came across in my performance. Another iconic scene is in the episode The Inner Light, where Captain Picard lives an entire lifetime as a different person in a matter of minutes. The direction, performance, and cinematography of this scene are also exceptional. The director, Peter Lauritsen, uses close-up shots and soft lighting to create a dreamlike atmosphere. The performance of Patrick Stewart is outstanding as he convincingly portrays a man living an entire lifetime in a matter of minutes. The scene's emotional impact is profound, leaving viewers in tears. In an interview, Peter Lauritsen commented on this scene, saying, It was a very challenging episode to direct but Patrick Stewart's performance was simply amazing. He brought so much depth and emotion to the character, and it was a privilege to work with him. These scenes are just a few examples of the exceptional direction, performance, and cinematography in Star Trek The Next Generation. They have had a lasting impact on the audience and are remembered as some of the most iconic scenes in television history. Quarters until a court martial can be convened. Natalia Janogulic played the strict fleet admiral Elena Nechayev in both Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Deep Space Nine, playing a crucial role in shaping policy regarding the Kardashians, Borg, and Makis. In his memoir, Sir Patrick Stewart admitted that during the first season, he would get angry at his castmates teasing and ad-libbing. After a cast meeting where he scolded them for goofing off, Brent Spiner took him aside and explained that his approach was not effective. Stewart later acknowledged that he had failed to understand the culture of episodic television and had imposed a more intense, serious atmosphere from his experiences at the Royal Shakespeare Company and the National Theatre. In terms of character details, Riker, Data, and Worf are each left-handed as they draw their phasers with their left hands. This is a small but interesting detail that adds depth to the characters. Not believe she killed him. These were words spoken in the heat of anger. Star Trek The Next Generation, which first aired in 1987, left a significant cultural and social impact. The series resonated with audiences due to its compelling storylines, diverse cast, and optimistic view of the future. It contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes such as acceptance, equality, and human rights. Tianjin's influence on pop culture is evident in various ways. For instance, its characters and quotes have become part of everyday conversations and the show has inspired numerous parodies and homages in other media. 
The series also played a crucial role in popularizing science fiction on television, paving the way for other successful shows like Battlestar Galactica and The Expanse. Moreover, TNG tackled complex social issues, making it a trailblazer in television. It addressed topics such as racism, sexism, and discrimination against marginalized communities. The show's characters often confronted these issues, promoting dialogue and understanding among viewers. Tian Jing's approach to storytelling helped normalize diversity and inclusion, making it a powerful tool for social change. In addition, Tian Jing's portrayal of technology and its role in society sparked interest in science and engineering. The show's depiction of advanced technology, such as holodecks and warp drive, inspired many young viewers to pursue careers in STEM fields. Overall, Star Trek The Next Generation left an indelible mark on popular culture and society. Its thoughtful exploration of social issues, diverse cast, and compelling storylines continue to resonate with audiences today. My left seems to be working. I haven't felt this good since the last time I was in space to Gettysburg. Susie Plaxon, known for her role in Star Trek The Next Generation, shared the stage with Patty Yasutake at the Star Trek Las Vegas convention in 2007. DC Comics, as the rights holders, published a six-issue limited series based on the show from late 1987 to early 1988. This was followed by a regular comic book series that lasted from 1989 to 1996, including an adaptation of Star Trek Generations, including an adaptation of Star Trek Generations. Nearly every member of the original Star Trek crew has appeared in The Next Generation, interacting with the new crew in various episodes, and the movie, Star Trek Generations. Kirk appeared in Generations, Bones in Encounter at Farpoint, Scotty in Relics, and Spock in Unification 2. Chekhov and Scotty also appeared in Generations, but they did not interact with the Next Generation crew. Uhura and Sulu were the only original crew members who did not appear in the Next Generation, but Uhura did appear in archive footage on Trials and Tribulations, and Sulu appeared on Flashback. <laughs> Star Trek The Next Generation, which first aired in 1987, received mixed reviews from critics during its initial season. Some critics praised the show's ambition and production values, while others criticized its pacing and writing. However, as the series progressed, it gained more positive reception and a loyal fan base. Key reviews of TNG often highlighted the show's thoughtful storytelling and strong characters. For instance, John J. O'Connor of the New York Times praised the series for its intelligent, sophisticated, and complex plots, as well as its first-rate production values. He also commended the cast, particularly Patrick Stewart's portrayal of Captain John Luke Picard, for their skill and dedication. Audience reactions to TNG were generally favorable, with many fans appreciating the show's optimistic vision of the future and its diverse cast. Over time, TNG developed a devoted following with some fans even preferring it to the original Star Trek series. Tianjin received numerous awards and nominations throughout its seven-season run. It was nominated for 57 Emmy Awards, winning 18, including for Outstanding Drama Series, Outstanding Art Direction for a Series, and Outstanding Sound Editing for a Series. The show also received several Saturn Awards, including for Best Syndicated Television Series and Best Genre TV Actor for Patrick Stewart. These accolades were significant for those involved in TNG, as they recognized the show's high production values, strong writing, and talented cast. The awards also helped to solidify TNG's place in the Star Trek franchise and television history, demonstrating that the show had transcended its origins and become a cultural phenomenon in its own right. The Forge in Engineering. Aye, sir. Can I have a Starfleet uniform? What you LeVar Burton shares a unique bond with the late Madge Sinclair, having played her son in four productions and her husband in another. Jonathan Frakes holds a distinctive record in the Star Trek universe, being the only actor to share scenes with regulars from all five series. Whoopi Goldberg's film career includes a movie, The Lion King, that has been recognized for its cultural significance by the Library of Congress. He's dead. The production of Star Trek. The next generation was filled with challenges and surprises. One instance involved actor Brent Spiner, who played the android Data. In one episode, Data was required to paint a portrait, but Spiner admitted he couldn't paint. The show's art department came to his rescue, creating a painting that Spiner pretended to paint on set. 
Another time, during the filming of the pilot episode, the ship's model, the USS Enterprise-D, caught fire due to a short circuit in the lighting system. The fire department had to be called, and the model sustained significant damage. The incident delayed filming, and the model had to be rebuilt. and it, the cast often found themselves in humorous situations. For example, Sir Patrick Stewart, who played Captain Picker, would sometimes forget his lines, which he attributed to being exhausted from the demanding shooting schedule. The crew would often play pranks on each other to keep morale high during long shooting days. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew formed a close-knit community. They would often socialize offset, and many lifelong friendships were formed during the show's seven-year run. The experiences and camaraderie shared behind the scenes contributed to the show's enduring popularity and success. I understand, Lieutenant. Captain, this character, Moriarty, in the original Starfleet uniforms of Star Trek The Next Generation, actors experienced discomfort, leading to a change of design. Sir Patrick Stewart's agent even threatened to sue Paramount due to potential muscle and joint damage from the spandex suits. This issue resulted in the creation of two-piece polyester uniforms in Season 3, although the shirts tended to ride up when the actors sat down. Stewart, in character as Picard, developed a habit of straightening his shirt with a sharp tug, a move known among fans as the Picker Maneuver. Michael Dorn holds the record for appearing in the most Star Trek episodes and movies as the same character, accumulating appearances in The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and four films. LeVar Burton, known for his role as Geordi LaForge, is not only an actor, but also a children's advocate. He demonstrated his extensive general knowledge in The Weakest Link, Star Trek Edition, winning an impressive 167,500 for Junior Achievement Southern California. I don't know how to tell you this. Oh, I know how you feel, dear. You're overwhelmed with excitement, don't believe. Star Trek The Next Generation, which first aired in 1987, left a significant mark on television and film history. The series, set in the 24th century, introduced a new generation of characters exploring the galaxy, upholding the values of the United Federation of Planets. The next generation not only expanded the Star Trek universe, but also influenced future filmmaking with its innovative storytelling and cutting-edge special effects. Its impact can be seen in various aspects of the film industry, from subsequent Star Trek series and films to inspiring new filmmakers and writers. One of the most notable contributions of the next generation is its diverse cast, which promoted inclusivity and representation in the media. The series featured various alien species, genders, and backgrounds, which paved the way for more diverse representation in modern television and film. The Next Generation also inspired numerous subsequent works, including the Star Trek prequel series Star Trek Enterprise, as well as the recent Star Trek Picard, which follows the continuing adventures of Captain John Luke Picker. The series' influence extends beyond the Star Trek franchise, with elements and homages appearing in various science fiction films and television shows. Moreover, the next generation fostered a community of dedicated fans who continue to engage with the series through conventions, fanfiction, and online forums. The show's enduring popularity is a testament to its ability to captivate audiences and inspire new generations of storytellers. In conclusion, Star Trek The Next Generation's lasting legacy and influence can be seen in its contributions to film history, its impact on future filmmaking, and the numerous subsequent works it inspired. The series remains an essential piece of science fiction media and a shining example of the power of inclusive storytelling. Ten seconds. Armin Shimmerman, known for his role as Quirk in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, did a commercial for the series action figures, showcasing each character figure while making brief comments. Meanwhile, his co-star Patrick Stewart, who played Captain Picker in Star Trek The Next Generation, was approached to voice Jafar in Aladdin, but had to decline due to scheduling conflicts. After focusing on film and television for decades, James Cromwell, who appeared in The Next Generation, returned to the stage in 2012, performing in Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Gada, and Tom Stoppard's The Invention of Love. To the pack led demand or not, we can either use force or not. The innovative television series, Star Trek The Next Generation, has left a significant mark in the world of entertainment. This show is not only known for its groundbreaking storylines, but also for inspiring one of the very first fan dubs, Star Trek Sinlos and Weltrum in Germany. 
Two dedicated fans use simple tools like a VCR, a microphone, and a Star Trek key fob to create their version of some episodes, which gain cult status and are still shown at Star Trek conventions today. Moreover, the series brought together notable actors, including John Delancey, who formed close friendships with Richard Dean Anderson, star of MacGyver, and Stargate SG-1. They even appeared together in various episodes of these shows and Legend. In 1994, Star Trek The Next Generation made history as the first show in syndication to be nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Drama Series, further solidifying its place in television history. The series has had a lasting impact on both fans and the industry, demonstrating the power of storytelling and the enduring appeal of the Star Trek universe. There may be records near the launch site. It could help us find LeVar Burton, known for his role in Star Trek The Next Generation, has made appearances as himself on The Big Bang Theory. On the other hand, Patrick Stewart was considered for the role of the Master in The Doctor Who movie from 1996, but the part ultimately went to Eric Roberts. Lastly, Tony Todd has made guest appearances on various notable science fiction series, including The X-Files, Stargate SG-1, and Smallville. His versatility in the genre is evident, as he has made appearances on all three of the longest-running North American science fiction series. Transporting system is still operating with active feed pattern buffers. I would like to talk with you about your... In the making of Star Trek The Next Generation, plans were made for a grand corridor encircling the Enterprise D's saucer section. However, this idea was abandoned due to its high maintenance cost. This concept was later revived in Star Trek The Experience, The Klingon Encounter, Clyde Kusatsu, an actor who made guest appearances on this series, also appeared on Lois and Clark The New Adventures of Superman and Superman The Animated Series. In contrast to the original Star Trek series, actors in the next generation could move freely while being beamed away by the ship's transporter. In the earlier series, actors, objects, and animals were frozen in place during the energizing process. I can find the artifact. <laughs> Very convenient. We if you have fond memories of Star Trek The Next Generation from 1987, we'd love to hear them. This groundbreaking series had a profound impact on many viewers, influencing their perspective on cinema and shaping their love for science fiction. Perhaps you were inspired by the diverse cast of characters, each with their own unique backgrounds and stories. Or maybe the innovative special effects and world building sparked your imagination. Whatever your experience, we'd love to hear about it. Did Star Trek The Next Generation leave a lasting impression on you? How did it make you feel? And what memories stand out to you the most? By sharing your experiences, you can help create a vibrant community of fans and spark interesting conversations. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, be sure to like and share this post with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Together, we can celebrate the enduring legacy of this beloved series. Sub-Lieutenant Seatall to the sickbay, we will attend to your quarters.